They told us no one in their right mind would dare sail into Antarctica's winter darkness. But that's exactly the reason I had to go. This startling declaration might sound like the opening line of a doomed adventure story, yet here we are, proudly recounting the fearsome wonders of the first ever wintertime research voyage aboard the legendary RRS Sir David Attenborough. Why risk a journey into those savage, ice-laden waters when most expeditions choose the relatively forgiving summers? Because genius tends to sprout in the unlikeliest corners of our planet, and Antarctica's hidden winter secrets hold the power to redefine our understanding of Earth's past, present, and future. Today we're diving right into the heart of this extraordinary mission. Why did we embark on a voyage some call reckless? How did it unveil astonishing truths about our planet's climate and ocean life? And what revelations might it carry for your everyday existence? In this story, we'll journey through the swirling Antarctic seas in perpetual darkness, plunge beneath treacherous ice flows to unearth new data on melting glaciers, uncover the surprising role of wintertime plankton, and witness how a handful of inquisitive seals nearly stole the show. Strap in, because the polar night has never been more captivating. Unrelenting winds that could skin an unprotected face in seconds, chunks of sea ice large enough to dwarf most ships, and climate systems so extreme they influence the rest of the planet. Antarctica's winter is the last place anybody would imagine as a cradle of scientific exploration. And yet, for all the talk of how alien and desolate it can be, our trove of knowledge about that harsh winter still remained embarrassingly shallow. Summer expeditions, with extended daylight, warmer air, and simplified logistics have yielded a wealth of findings over the decades. But scientists have always suspected that those warm months don't tell the whole story. Locked behind corridors of night and storms, some of the most decisive processes, like shifting ocean currents that sculpt the edges of glaciers, or the subtle chemical cues that spark phytoplankton blooms, can transpire differently in the hush of winter. That's why we boarded the RRS Sir David Attenborough when the sun barely peeped above the horizon, determined to gather missing data from the dark season, a time when the ocean's hidden rhythms run their own course. So, how did we end up braving a region of the world where the cold stings so bitterly that metal tools freeze to our gloves and where an endless night cloaks the horizon? The mission was spearheaded by Professor Mike Meredith, a steadfast oceanographer from British Antarctic Survey. Meredith has crossed these waters numerous times in the summer months, but never before in deep winter, a period of intense isolation and extreme meteorological ferocity. From the outset, naysayers labeled it an epic gamble. Summer voyages already demanded superhuman logistics, but winter travel was on a whole new level, from navigating mountainous sea ice that can suddenly shatter or shift, to orchestrating vital ship operations with minimal visibility Every step tested the bounds of what we thought possible, yet the objective remained crystal clear. Antarctica resonates through every corner of the globe, from whispering changes in ocean salinity that alter global currents, to triggering alarm bells over rising sea levels from melting ice sheets. Understanding the winter interplay among glaciers, sea ice, and the ocean around them is essential to predict how Earth may shift under future climate scenarios. We thus prepared for an expedition that blended advanced technology, old-fashioned grit, and a willingness to embrace the unexpected. No detail was left to chance. The ship was equipped with cutting-edge sonar, drill rigs, deep-water sampling rosettes, and specialized winter-hardy drones capable of filming and mapping the murky waters hidden beneath slabs of ice. Each day was a triumph of cooperation among scientists, engineers, navigators, and even the ship's culinary crew. Because, let's face it, few things keep morale afloat in such conditions better than a revitalizing hot meal. Yet even the best gadgets and resources can't quell the primal hush that blankets the region in winter. When the storms subside, an enormous stillness settles, occasionally pierced by the sharp crack of calving ice. In that solemn hush, the planet itself seems to whisper its oldest, most cryptic stories. So, what kind of stories, precisely, did we uncover? For starters, we discovered that not all glacial melt behaves the same during winter. The frigid conditions and extensive sea ice cover might suggest that glaciers freeze in place, waiting until summer to resume their more dramatic melting patterns. But ocean data indicated that certain circulation patterns persist and even intensify beneath that ice, funneling slightly warmer water closer to glacier faces 
continuing to whittle them down during the darkest months. This can potentially alter global sea level calculations, as it shows how Antarctic glaciers do not simply halt their journey toward the ocean when the sun disappears. Already, these observations point to a dynamic system that continues to transform year-round, challenging the assumption that Antarctica is essentially static outside of the busy summer season, and that was just the first surprise waiting for us. Meanwhile, we saw how the ocean's chemical composition shifts in these punishing winter conditions. It's no secret that plankton form the foundation of the marine food web. They also play a pantheon of roles in regulating global climate, particularly by absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Yet standard winter data on these tiny organisms is meager. Were they dormant under the ice, waiting for more sunlight to appear before coming back to life? Or could they still flourish in certain pockets, feeding off subtle nutrient surges and fleeting daylight hours? We discovered that winter plankton communities can indeed remain active, capitalizing on any available light and nutrient upwelling from ocean currents to sustain themselves. That was nothing short of revelatory. Although they might be in smaller numbers than during the summer bloom, the evidence suggests that these winter survivors could set the stage for explosive growth come spring, and with it, shape the carbon uptake patterns of the Southern Ocean. The profound significance is obvious. If winter plankton dynamics shift under warming conditions, it may drastically reshape how the planet balances carbon. And what of the mesmerizing array of wildlife we stumbled upon during those endless nights? We expected to see some determined seals or a stray penguin colony in the distance, but no one on board anticipated crossing paths with so many humpback whales. On one jaw-dropping day alone, we sighted over 100 of these giant marine mammals, surging out of the water, tails slapping the surface as though celebrating our presence in the frigid gloom. Their curiosity and sheer power left us speechless, underscoring the reality that even the darkest months are brimming with life if you know where to look. We have to wonder, is it purely a coincidence, or might these whales be exploiting new feeding grounds exposed by sparser sea ice this season? Piecing together that puzzle could shed more light on changing ocean ecology, revealing how migrating species reshape their behavior as conditions shift. Yes, it's at this precise juncture that I want to pause and ask you. If hearing about these majestic creatures thriving in some of Earth's most desolate waters has sparked your curiosity, let us know. Show your appreciation for the courageous scientists and crew who braved truly daunting circumstances to capture these glimpses into the hidden corners of our planet. It's one way to keep this conversation alive and ensure more people discover these pivotal findings. Now, let's press forward because there's much more to uncover about Antarctica's winter secrets. Beyond wildlife encounters and ocean dynamics, we also use sophisticated sonar systems to map the seabed near significant glacial systems. What we discovered were labyrinthine ridges, channels, and troughs that had never been charted in detail before. These structures, sculpted by millennia of shifting ice, can direct ocean currents in unexpected ways, creating swirling eddies or pockets of slightly warmer water that accelerate the melting of certain glaciers. Understanding these hidden topographies is essential if we're to refine our climate models. Ever wonder why some glaciers seem to be melting faster than others? even though they sit at similar latitudes and endure the same harsh conditions? The ocean's interplay with submarine geography could be the missing piece to that puzzle. These observations are hot off the press, so to speak, and we expect them to inform multiple studies in the months and years ahead. To say this was a rewarding, albeit exhausting expedition, barely captures the emotional intensity of living for weeks in a near-perpetual twilight. Around midday, you might notice a subtle glow on the horizon that passes for daylight during these icy months, only to see it fade into a pinkish dusk an hour or two later. These fleeting daylight windows made us hyper-vigilant about time management. We had to schedule complex operations, like retrieving water samples with rosettes or launching underwater drones, during those precious hours of visibility. But ironically, it's the long nights we'll remember most vividly. Step outside on a clear evening, and you could watch the stars spread out in overwhelming clarity, with the Milky Way arching overhead in a glittering ribbon across the void. Sometimes the air was so crisp you felt as if you could hear your own heartbeat bouncing off the icebergs. In that grandeur of silence, it becomes painfully obvious. Antarctica in winter is not just another research environment. It's practically another planet, 
orbiting under the same sky as the rest of us, yet governed by wholly different rules. That's precisely where the RRS Sir David Attenborough proved its worth. The vessel itself was designed to cut through sea ice and protect its occupants from ferocious polar wind, but even the finest technology demands a resilient crew. Every single person on board was well aware that a single miscalculation or mechanical failure in these conditions could escalate into a crisis. Yet that shared awareness brought us together in a sense of purpose rarely found elsewhere. You might see an engineer who'd just spent hours rearranging engine components next to a glaciologist wearing four layers of thermal gear, both leaning over a sonar readout, trying to interpret new data in real time. Moments like these highlight how the future of exploration rests on collaborative determination, a willingness to shoulder responsibilities that extend beyond your comfort zone. Little by little, we discovered that winter Antarctica doesn't just test your research plan, it tests your very identity. And what about those unexpected encounters that add a dash of humor to these otherwise serious pursuits? Imagine deploying a specially fabricated net, hoping to analyze trace minerals in the water, only to realize you're being stalked by a group of curious seals. They slide across flows of ice, propping themselves upright as though they're fans at a sports match, cheering for the next big sampling event. With no illusions about personal space, they might even poke their whiskered faces right up to the equipment, leaving behind a trail of watery footprints. That's precisely the sort of whimsical moment that reaffirms why scientific exploration is both challenging and deeply uplifting. Before long, we even started unofficially naming some of the seals that hung around for days. Their presence seemed a friendly reminder of the interconnectedness of all life that thrives here, winter or not. You can almost sense the scale of data we accumulated. From seafloor maps to chemical analyses, from acoustic recordings of whales to microbe samples collected behind ice ridges, the volume of raw material is immense. The next step, sifting, processing, and interpreting it all, will be just as colossal a task. Our preliminary glimpses already show radical variations in winter melting rates between distinct glacier systems, reinforcing the notion that local seafloor contours and ocean currents are pivotal in shaping their fate. That's where hope and urgency converge. The better we can measure and comprehend these dynamics now, the more accurately we can outline scenarios for global sea level rise. This is exactly the kind of data that can help governments and communities prepare for potential coastal changes in the coming years or decades. Let this also serve as a call to action to keep exploring. If you're just as enthralled by these tales of winter voyages and scientific breakthroughs, consider subscribing to follow us on future research adventures. Our planet's polar regions deserve more than fleeting attention. They demand dedicated study and a global commitment to safeguard them. By staying engaged, you lend your voice to a growing chorus that values science, stewardship, and the pursuit of truth in realms that might seem too remote to impact daily life, yet do so beyond measure. For years, we've known that Antarctica's influence stretches much farther than geography might suggest. Changes here can tip the balance of global weather patterns, shift ocean circulation, or even tweak the planet's overall albedo as ice recedes or expands. The question was never about whether Antarctica shapes our world, but how thoroughly winter sets the stage for those transformations. Through our expedition, we've caught a glimpse of how these processes unfold in near darkness, guided by ocean currents that slip unseen underneath thick sea ice, and fueled by the unstoppable, if subtle, routines of aquatic life. The RRS, Sir David Attenborough's voyage, has shown us that winter is not merely a hush between flamboyant summers. It's the keystone that cements a cycle of life and climate interplay. Without knowledge of these winter months, our understanding of Earth's climate tapestry remains woefully incomplete. But this narrative isn't just about scientific facts or mesmerizing pictures. It's about building a bridge between your life, wherever you might be sitting right now, and this seemingly distant frontier. If you live near any coastline, the fate of Antarctic glaciers has direct implications for you. If your local weather extremes have grown more frequent or intense, you have a stake in deciphering how polar ocean currents interact with the broader climate system. And if you care about the magical synergy of marine life, from tiny plankton to colossal humpback whales, then you have an undeniable reason to keep your ears open for everything that emerges from these remote waters. Each piece of data is a puzzle fragment in our universal quest to figure out where we, as a species, 
fits in the grand cosmic blueprint of Earth's ever-shifting environment. We can't end this story without reflecting on the personal transformations that happen when you spend weeks in nearly unbroken nighttime. Ask any member of our expedition what surprised them the most, and you'll likely hear about the calm that settles into your very center, the feeling that you've stepped away from conventional earthly concerns, to drift in a realm where your breath condenses into tiny ice crystals the second you exhale. You discover reserves of patience and adaptability you never realized you possessed because your survival, and that of your fellow explorers, depends on them. Even the act of stepping onto the ship's deck at midnight, with swirling snow capturing the glimmer from overhead floodlights, can spark a sense of awe that humbles you to your core. You might stand there, scanning the horizon for the faint glow of an iceberg's edge, fully aware that wherever you look, the wilderness extends for countless miles in every direction. This humbling connection to the environment is, in its own way, a clarion call to protect what we can still preserve of these pristine realms. And so, if you're just joining us now, fear not. You've arrived at the perfect moment. We've gone beyond the typical summer snapshots of Antarctica to reveal an entirely different world. We've encountered incredible whales, discovered how glacial melt never truly sleeps, and glimpsed what winter plankton are doing beneath sheets of ice that stretch for endless miles. We've uncovered new topographical secrets about the seafloor, seen the resolute might of glaciers calving in silent darkness, and reveled in the mysterious interplay between atmosphere and ocean. In essence, we've illuminated the invisible puzzle pieces that are every bit as crucial as the ones that summer months feed into. Anyone who assumed that Antarctica simply hibernates all winter is in for an awakening. Though the research portion is done for now, the real work of unraveling data has only begun. We'll spend many months, possibly years, analyzing each water sample, acoustic record, and high-resolution map, all in an effort to decode the labyrinth of processes that govern not just Antarctica's winter, but realistically the entire planet's climate tapestry. Yet one lesson remains immediate and undeniable. Antarctica's winter is a living laboratory, not some barren emptiness. It teems with clues that might help unlock the greatest challenges our planet faces in the coming decades. And that means Antarctica is tied to every corner of Earth, binding us together in a cosmic dance of ocean, ice, and life itself. Now comes the final note of reflection. Imagine the moment we glimpsed our first sunrise after so many days in twilight. The horizon glowed like a promise, revealing icebergs tinted with pastel oranges and pinks, while the sea's surface shimmered in the refracted light. The entire expedition team gathered silently on the deck, each of us absorbing the scene as though hearing the first notes in a long, forgotten symphony. In one sense, it signaled the end of our winter watch. In another, it reminded us that the story of Antarctica is never truly done. The cycle continues, each season unveiling new marvels. If we can keep shining a spotlight on them, perhaps we can make better decisions, not only for ourselves, but for the generations that will follow. Thank you for accompanying us on this thrilling odyssey into the Antarctic winter. May it inspire you to remain vigilant to the wonders and warnings our planet offers, whether it's from the bottom of the globe or your own backyard. The RRS, Sir David Attenborough's voyage, was the first of its kind, yet it already forecasts more questions than answers. That's the perpetual allure of true exploration. It fans the flames of curiosity. Let's preserve that fire, share these discoveries wide, and keep forging ahead into the unknown.